Have you ever tasted your own yes. boogers? No! This feels kind of sexual, John. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We did receive some questions from your friends and family. I feel hot. You sweating? I can see it. Both like in person and on the machine. I oh God, I feel like I have a husband that I'm cheating on, dude. <laughs> did you go out last night? Yep. True. Where'd you go? I don't know the name of it, but it was like a really sceny party where like all the rappers and pretty Instagram models go and stuff. Okay. Sadiq, the highlight room. I don't know. <laughs> I can't fucking spell it, but it was in Hollywood. Okay, moving on. Is your real name Wheezy? No. True. My real name is Gila, it's very Jewish. But when I was in, was it high school or maybe middle school? Like, Wheezy just stuck because of the asthma. I don't know if it came from a PE class or what. And then, I mean, Lil Wayne was hot at the time, so, like, that made it cooler, because then I used to call myself Wheezy F Lady, which is pretty dumb now that I think about it, considering I got F Lady tatted on me. Where's the tattoo? Um, it's, like, right above my, like, hip vagina area. <laughs> why, why did you choose the hair for a Wheezy Because my parents would never see it, Brandon. Oh, OK, fair enough. So does that mean you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery? Yep, and I have a Star of David down there too. It's so dumb. <laughs> and they're pink. It's like literally the worst fucking tattoo ever. So for those of you who don't know, I know Brandon because you contacted me. What'd you do? You wrote me an email or DM? Uh, email. Okay, because you ain't got that many followers, so I probably would have thought you wouldn't really talk about that. Mm -hmm. But like you had development in the t in the signature, and I was like, oh, this is some real shit. And you were trying to give me a TV show, and then we found out we both dated the same girl, which really, I feel like, started our bond. And here we are, we made sex sales together. Are we like real friends or like industry friends? I fucking bought you an expensive pair of sneakers, and even though I split it, we're real friends. I send candles. John, how, how'd that answer come out? Okay, all right, good, all right, cool. We can move on. Would you consider yourself an open book? Yeah. True. Okay. Is there anything you're shy about? Maybe insecurities or something. I, I don't know, probably not. No. True. <laughs> uh, all right, have you ever lied to your mother? <laughs> Duh, is the fucking sky blue? True. <laughs> uh, are there any drugs that you've done that you haven't told your mom about? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw that it spit. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't told her about? No. That doesn't look good, Vivi. You want to elaborate? You want to spill the beans right now? Yeah, I have definitely lied to my mom about what kind of drugs, drugs I've done, particularly when like she's really worried about me and I know I'm about to get crazy that night. I'm like, yeah, just like a little bit of weed. She definitely knows she's a lie. She doesn't need these hooks. She could kick John's ass in this job. <laughs> Did you have sex with your high school girlfriend in her Miami apartment? My high school girlfriend? No. I wasn't that gay then. I was, but like not gay enough to fuck in my mom's house gay. It was more like, oh my god, we had tequila shots, let's do it. But like now, yes, I would, but no, I didn't. Seemed pretty on. True. Yeah, okay. There you go, huh? Um, I cannot believe she thought that. I was a little <laughs> slut in high school, though. And now. And her last question is, when did you lose your virginity? I knew it. Did I not say it, Brandon? You did, you did. I think 15, 16. Let's say 16. True. Okay, all right, you are an open book. So these are not questions from your mom anymore. These are just general questions. Okay. You got your professional start working in tech and finance, correct? Yeah. True. Oh, okay. Did you ever mix business with pleasure? <laughs> Did you fuck around in the workplace? <laughs> all of my workplaces. I, I haven't fucked someone at Fuse yet, but the time is coming, probably. <laughs> you didn't let me hire the crew I wanted to, that's why. Yes, and for that very reason. Okay. Yeah, you know, we don't want any conflicts. How about anymore. fuck someone from like the show? Wait, let me think. No. No, I haven't. Yeah. Who would I fuck? Rico Nasty, <laughs> Young M.A. Um, I'm trying to think. The OnlyFans foot girl. She was kind of- Bella Features? Oh, oh, I didn't 
have sex with them, but I would want to. Oh, I see. Let me see, who else was really hot? Honestly, there's a lot of people I bang. All right, that was great. Uh, this question is from Charlemagne. He wants to know oh. if you think Mandy is your actual soulmate. Like, do you think y'all should be together forever? <sighs> this is a really hard one because I know that Mandy and I will both be successful at whatever we do, but I do think that horrible decisions could be amazing forever. Like, I think we could be like really old on some Golden Girl shit and talk about like, cause you know, like in a hundred years from now, there might be like robots that can fuck you. And we should be talking about those with young people. Like, I think that we could be soulmates in that way. Like business soulmates, I think we have amazing chemistry and like, yeah. But like for love and marriage, fuck no. True. Okay. All right. You all, uh, you know, have had your moments, you and Mandy. Oh no. This is from Charlemagne again? Yeah. Who won the first fight you ever had? Okay, let me tell you something. I am really upset about this shit. Mandy acts like she won that fight because she fucking pulled my ponytail off. I didn't know she was coming and that's the only reason the ponytail came off. And I didn't even know who I was fighting because we were in the middle of a fucking dance floor. You don't want to fight like that. I didn't have my ass beat. There were no marks. It doesn't count. We could do a rematch for charity. She's telling the truth. Okay. Thank you, John. All right, all right. Damn. All right, the next few are from the very talented Venus X. Okay. Okay. Have you ever thought about being a stripper? Yeah. I worked at a strip club for like four hours. What? True. I was in Orlando. The name of the strip club is called Rachel's. And I was really broke. And I took a job there as like a waitress. And they were like, yeah, like one day you'll upgrade to stripper. And then I was really bad at that. And stripping looked really hard. So I just left and said I was going on lunch. <laughs> you never came back. Dude, I have like serious stripper fantasies. Like? Like dreams about it. Like you being a stripper? Yeah, especially after that movie that Cardi B was in. Oh my God, I was like, I could do this. <laughs> do you think you're coordinated enough to be a stripper? No. <laughs> Honestly, even if I could like learn the steps, I just feel like I'd end up like falling in love with a client or fucking a client and lose my job. No, you're allowed to do that, right? John, what do you think? What would your stripper name be? <laughs> Lolita. It sounds like a fucking lie as a name, but I just feel like it'd be super hot for a stripper name. True. How many people have you had sex with at one time? Uh, the most? Two. Threesome. Not that I wouldn't do more. I just feel like I can only handle two people looking at my body naked uh, at once. But I aspire to be great. True. <laughs> I aspire to be great. Okay. <laughs> What would be your limit? Like, I know you said two people looking at your body at one time is a lot, but like, if you had to set a limit in your stripper fantasy, how many people are you sleeping with? We would be like stuck at the strip club. Maybe it's like a hurricane or something. We have to just be stuck down there together. And it's just like all these hot strippers. And maybe we're in the locker room or something. I don't know. And it starts as like a secret in the bathroom. And then another stripper hears it. And then we all just start doing it. And then maybe there's like one client left over around. And there's like a dick in case we need it. But we probably won't. <laughs> So I don't know, 10. 10. True. Would you ever share your darkest, most vulnerable sex fantasy? Darkest? I don't think anything I want to do is dark because I feel like dark implies that something's wrong. And I think that as long as people are consensual and you're not hurt anyone, then like it's fine. True. Are you ever ashamed about any of the porn that you watch? Uh, yes. Sometimes I watch porn. And literally in the middle of it, if like the phone rings or like the bus goes by or like anything happens, I'm like, oh, bitch, you are sick. <laughs> True. Do you have a curated sex playlist? Yeah. Who curated it? Brent Fyatt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Okay. Oh, I actually had one with a guy I used to call Hospital Dick. And when I was in Mexico, we would like always make comments about the Wi-Fi. And I'd be like, oh my god, like I can't talk to you all day because the Wi-Fi is fucked up. And he would like send me texts like, come get this good Wi-Fi. And we had a Wi-Fi playlist. And that's pretty stupid now that I think about it. But it was like a little inside joke of, yeah. That was one. But now when I listen to songs that were on that one, it makes me want to cry. So now I just listen to all Brent Fias because he makes me want to come. True. Why does it make you want to cry? Like the old playlist? Yeah. Cause it's just sad, just that good dick went to waste. And it's just so depressing. <laughs> so it wasn't an emotional connection, it was... Uh, no, no, was super bad. emotional. Like, I wish we could still be together so we could still fuck, but we're not, so... That's all right, I've moved on. 
Dennis has some questions. Oh no. Dennis for everybody is, give us some context. Who's Dennis? Um, Dennis is one of my closest friends. He knows me really well, almost so well that I'm scared. So he's like your human lie detector. Yeah. All right. 100%. Dennis wants to know what the weirdest thing you do in the shower is. Uh, sometimes, like, I exfoliate my vagina and I have a mirror and I stare at it. I just do, I do like, really weird shit that I want to, like, see by myself. I shave my asshole for, like, a really weird long time. Like, because, like, I'm scared to, like, cut it open. So I just take a long time doing it. And I feel like masturbating is not weird, so I won't include that. True. So while you're doing all those things, are you ever on the phone talking to people while you're in the shower doing those weird things? All the time. Dennis most of the time, um, random calls, sometimes you if you call, whoever, anybody. I answer the phone. I have AirPods. It's fucking 2021 here. That was all true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so the next questions are from Alex Media. Can you explain who Alex is a little bit? Alex is also one of my best friends, and I co-own my studio in New York with Alex, and he better not fucking ask me anything about the amount I work I do. Well, his first question is, have you ever walked in on your parents having sex? <laughs> I've never walked in on them having sex, but I saw my mom drinking off my dad, and it was gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's weirdly worse, right? It's <laughs> so much worse. Ugh. True. How old were you? I want to tell you a number, but I don't remember. I'd say maybe under 10. I wasn't a teenager, because I wouldn't have cared to go in their room if I was a teenager, right? Like, you want to be away from your parents. So it had to be like eight. All right. Have you ever tasted your own? Yes. Boogers. No! That's nasty. That's WPS. But I do be looking at them, though. True. All right. So you pick your nose? Yeah, all the time. OK. Like in public? Mm, not if someone's looking, but like if I'm out, if I really have to, yeah. I don't need John to tell me that that's true. Yeah, people are definitely not going to call you anymore after this. <laughs> uh, all right, last question from Alex. Have you ever peed in a pool? <laughs> Nigga, like literally last week. Not on purpose, I was fucked up. True. Have you ever peed in a pool on purpose? No. What do you mean on purpose? Like when pee? you're not fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the only pool that I haven't peed in when I really gotta pee is the Soho House pool because I feel like they so advanced, it might change colors or something. And I can't handle that shame. But if I'm at like a hotel, like fuck it. I'm Girl. never going back. She started sweating quite a bit there though, huh? Because it's embarrassing yeah. as fuck. Mm -hmm. All right. So recently you decided to release your name. Why'd you do that? Honestly, I was really fearful of people contacting my family and things like that, just if they knew my last name or like coming to stalk and kill me. But then I realized I've been hiding my name because of corporate America and now I've done things that are so much bigger that I think it's a great way to unveil my name. You know what I mean? Like in a TV credit or like in the Hollywood Reporter, like that was such a big deal for Kenya Barris and for me. And I feel like telling people about these new roles and these new places in my life should come like that instead of someone having to like figure out my name and posting it on like a blog or something. It's better if like I tell it. Charlemagne says something to me that I'll never forget. Always tell your own truth before someone uses it against you and I have a dumb fucking name, so I might as well just say it myself. Mm. True. So you got a lot of exciting things happening for yourself. What are you most excited about for the future? I think what I'm most excited about is producing content. Like I've been talent for a long time. I've been talking about sex for a long time and I have been making my own content for the last four and a half years and I really want to help other people elevate their shit. And it feels good. I want to do what you're doing. I want to sit at the fucking bar stool right now and ask someone else if they taste themselves or their boogers. True. It's a good feeling. <laughs> Follow up to that. What were you scared of like before this moment of success and what do you think you're scared of looking to the future? I will tell you, I was very scared about sex cells not being produced right, and you know that. Mm -hmm. I've had conversations with you freaking out, thinking views would fuck it up, thinking that people would look at certain episodes like they were cheap, and it was really important to me, especially considering that a lot of these are black businesses and black woman-owned businesses, that we don't make black shit look like cheap shit, because I feel like 
all I see on Twitter is like, oh, why is this so expensive because it's black? Or this should be cheaper and like a friend discount. And I really wanted these to look like the high-end businesses that they are and be treated with respect. And I think we all did a great job collaborating on making sure that these stories were told in a way to where someone almost forgot they were watching a sex worker talk about business. So that was something I was really fearful of. And I'm so happy with how everything looks and it's been great. That's all I feel true. Right. Come to Fuse. Right. <laughs> what about in the future? What are you worried about? Honestly, I never thought I would be head of fucking audio development for someone that's as big as Kenya Barris. You know what I mean? I never thought I would be on Charlemagne's label or that I would own my own podcast studio. So there's this part of me that's like, oh, maybe this is the biggest shit you'll do. Like, what the fuck am I gonna do bigger than working with one of the biggest Hollywood directors of all time? What am I gonna do bigger than that? Be that Hollywood director? Like, there's no fucking way. So I don't know. I think I would say I'm scared of staying where I'm at. Now that you've sort of reached a new plateau, that doesn't give you any confidence that there's gotta be something more that you can do in the future? No, like you sent me a text message that said I see a big elevation for you. Like, I feel like this was it. So what happens now? Do we just stay up here? No, we go higher. You keep going? Yeah. But where's the limit, dude? That's the thing, like, everybody has a fall off point. Like, I swear to God, Brandon, if I fall off, I'm gonna be so pissed. I'm deleting my Instagram if I fall off. But the nice thing is like, hopefully at that point you'll have enough money, you fall off to like some crazy island somewhere and just enjoy your life. Or maybe just like, that'll be like the sex tape unleashing. You know what I'm saying? Is there one floating around? No, nah, I mean, I got a bunch on my phone, but it ain't like someone else has them. But I'm saying like, maybe if I get to this point where it's like everybody's just really worried with me, I'm be like, you know what? I'm gonna throw my pussy up on that OnlyFans. I saw a red line pop up on that. Does that mean that that was false or true? Good truth. Good truth. All right, Aww. so nobody else has it. All right, great. Good truth, good sex tape. <laughs> Do you think the work you've done with like horrible decisions and sex sales and everything else that you've done, do you feel like it's gonna create a change? Um, for one, 100% I've seen horrible decisions the goal of Horrible Decisions was to destigmatize kink for the black community, right? I'm not saying I don't care about anyone else, but the black community is my priority and it's my audience and it's who I primarily speak to. And I've watched that shift, whether it be in podcast culture or whatever. Mandy and I have done a lot that a lot of podcasters weren't doing in our space. As far as sex sells, like you and I created that show together and it was on the premise of making sure that we are showing that the shit isn't that taboo. Like, these people are normal, these jobs are normal, and I do believe like we're shape-shifting with everything. Even something as simple as a lie detector test and making jokes about my sex life or honesty with my mom, I wanna show people that you can be this open. Yeah, true. I'm gonna throw some questions at you really quickly, all right? Okay. You gotta answer as fast as you can, no thinking. <laughs> What's your favorite food? French food, steak, chicken, escargot, fuck. That was all a mess. One of them. What's your favorite color? Black. True. What's your favorite place to have sex? My apartment. True. Well, where's your favorite place to vacation? Mexico. You know that's my shit. True. New York or LA? New York, fuck. John, true, right? Oh! <laughs> I'm trying to get Wait, you to move here. your truth or my truth? Off the charts. Whoa, he's not lying. Yo, New York over LA all day, bro. Yes, I like matcha and oat milk, but nah, bro. You're like digging yourself further because it's going up again. Because I'm passionate about this. John, I don't know how long you've been doing this, but no. <laughs> all right, Weezy, you did pretty good. Pretty honest. Yeah, how are you feeling right. now it's all done? I feel amazing. I've learned a little bit about myself, although I am 99% of a truth teller. And for the rest of you, stay tuned to see what's next with me.